Hey, welcome back to Business 163, Personal Finance. Uh, and this is our fifth and last video in this module on behavioral finance. Now, uh, you realize I have given you several supplemental videos and a whole bunch of readings as well. So um, you have some other work to do, but this is my last video lecture. As you can see from this title slide in this very last lecture, we're talking about the whole issue of online shopping and behavioral finance. And this is really an important um, uh, uh, topic in modern day life, right? Why? Well, as you can see here in the first slide, online shopping is what? It's a permanent part of our lives. We know this, right? Amazon is leading the way. Um, most of us have embraced online shopping as the major way we get stuff. It's so much fun to shop in our jammies and just wait for the brown box to show up at our front door. Right? As a result, retail shopping's in big trouble. You know this, right? All the big long-standing retailers, right? Macy's is in trouble. Nordstrom is in trouble. Bloomingdale's is in trouble. Radio Shack is gone. Sears is gone. Kmart is gone, right? And so either stores are embracing and changing the way they do business to embrace online shopping, or they may be going the way of the dinosaur and the eight-track tape, right? Think about it. Where do you buy textbooks nowadays. Where do you buy clothes? Where do you get your electronics? Where do you get shoes? Where do you get, well, everything, right? We Im have embraced online shopping. And so when we talk about behavioral finance and the behavioral elements that sometimes our decisions are, well, well, less than rational, let's take a look at online shopping and how that's true. The first thing I would tell you is that online sellers are not your friends. No matter how good you feel about, you know, buying stuff online, the folks who are selling you that stuff, they're in it for their benefit, not yours. So here's the thing. Look at this image I've embedded from Ryanair. Okay. What is we, what are we looking at? We're looking at a tr airline website where you typically go to purchase airline tickets. And they also, for every time you buy a ticket, they offer you travel insurance. But take a look. Let's say you don't want to buy travel insurance. Look how far you have to dig into this website, highlighted in red there in the image, to find the option that says, I don't want you to insure me. I don't want to buy this insurance. Look, it's embedded in <laughs> when you select your country of residence. There's no easy button to say, I don't want to buy this travel insurance. I just want the airline ticket. You have to dig around in here to actually search through your country of residence and listed under D, under Denmark, above Finland, is the D option that says, don't insure me, right? This is what we call a dark pattern of website development. Dark pattern. What? If you've never heard that term before, it is a really big area of study in behavioral finance. What's a dark pattern? A dark pattern is a visual interface technique to make you do something the company wants you to do and make it difficult, or at the very least non-intuitive, to do what they don't want you to do. And I've given you a supplemental video that discusses the whole topic of dark patterns and gives you this example. Here's the example. How do you delete your Amazon account? Most of us, if not all of us, now have an account with Amazon, whether we've decided to go prime or not, right? We have some sort of account. Let's say you decided you want to just get rid of the account. You don't want to suspend it. You don't want to, you know, temporarily, you know, you want to permanently delete your Amazon account. Well, here's the exercise you will see in that video. How many steps does it take to actually delete your Amazon account? You won't find an easy way to find a button to delete your account. And quite frankly, once you finally find it, which is like more than eight steps to do it, it includes you got to chat with a live Amazon representative to actually delete your account. And by the way, guess what that rep's going to do on the live chat? Is going to try to convince you for 30 minutes why you shouldn't delete your Amazon account. This is what we call in uh, the study of behavioral finance, a roach motel. <laughs> it's easy to get in, it's impossible to get out, like the old roach motel um, uh, uh, commercials on television, right? And there are other common dark patterns. 
websites will use color that misleads you and sort of visually calls you to make an unwanted purchase. They're going to increase a sense of urgency to suggest you're going to be left behind using terms like, hey, there's only two left at this price, right? We're low on quantity, right? Those kinds of things, right? They're going to offer you special offers that trick you into signing up for an annual subscription. Or here's another example, social media that sells all your personal information without you even realizing it. These are all dark patterns. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. If you were under the notion that when you go to buy stuff online, the main way that website is designed is simply to make it easy to find what you want and to make it relatively painless to go through the sales transaction. I want you to guess again. Online retailers, online sellers have a vested interest, have an agenda that benefits when you buy more stuff rather than you buying less stuff. And some, not all, but some online sellers will use what we call dark patterns to lead you down the path they want you to go down to buy perhaps more stuff than you intend to buy or buy stuff in ways that you don't want to buy and may give you no easy way of escape they may continue to nudge you, nudge you, nudge you, nudge you to lead you where they want you to go, which is to what? To put more items in your shopping cart. In fact, here's an exercise you can go through. If you just spend 15 to 20 minutes on Amazon.com and count up how many ways on the normal product page that they nudge you to add the item into their shopping cart. Here's something you'll find. On many websites, including Amazon and many of the other big retailers, here are some of the nudges you will easily find designed to get you to add more items to your shopping cart. They will serve up free delivery. They will serve up a rating system. They will quote to you the exact amount of money that you've saved with this particular transaction today. They'll give you the sales price in bright red. They will tell you, hey, this is a secure transaction. Don't need to worry. They will use the term great and synonyms like that over and over and over again. They will go give you a host of reviews, editorial reviews, consumer reviews. They'll assure you the product is in stock, at least for a limited time. They'll quote you the sales price again. They will tell you you'll earn a certain credit. They'll serve you up over a thousand ratings for product. They'll give you a buy, one click, buy now. They'll tell you to look inside. They'll give you a larger, prominent buy button to attract your eyes. They'll, if you, in order in three hours, you're gonna get this. They'll uh, offer you the way to share and be proud of your purchase the, on social media. These are just some of the ways that retailers intentionally design user interface to persuade you to buy more stuff from them. Now here's the thing you need to realize. Dark patterns are a part of clever interface design. They are tricks used in websites and apps to make you do things you didn't mean to, like buying or something, signing up for something you didn't intend to. The first step of avoiding them is realizing what is going on and why. It's not there to make it easy for you to find what you want. They are cleverly put there as part of higher order design to persuade you to do what they want you to do. Now, not all online retailers use dark patterns, but more and more so, more retailers are using more of these kinds of techniques to guide you where they want you to go. Realize this going on. Realize that, yes, online shopping in many ways is more convenient, and it does save time, and it does save, in some cases, money. But just realize they're not your friends, they're retailers. And therefore, you need to be in command and control of your own financial decisions, and don't allow yourself to be persuaded by clever design. Well, I hope that helps as it sets the stage for us to consider the impact of behavioral finance on our personal financial lives. Thanks so much for your attention. 
don't forget you've got some supplemental videos that you need to go through as well as um, a ton of reading additional readings that i've given you supplemental readings to download in canvas thanks so much we will see you in the next module